Er die Gildel schießt gegen die Ursche, wo ihm Falte ist für ihn, wo er illig ist, der uns ermaden. Gut, ihr habt alle uns, gut, ihr habt alle uns, wie wir uns, und wir haben schon gesagt, wir haben schon gesagt, wir stürmen, und wir stürmen Desmond, und wir sind Geufer, und wir sind Schkerdul, und wir sind so sauber in Björk Dein Scherach. Beter noch ein bisschen Wein Scherach von Ermaden. Wie ist es mein, dass er mit Lea Stach und so Ermaden er und viele Sean O'Rear Dein weg Lobre Sean O'Rear Dein und Mordach, wie ich sehe, Kehrt Blien und Mordach. The poet Sean O'Rear Dein would celebrate his 100th birthday tomorrow and as I was driving in and watching the sun coming up, um, I was reminded of one of his most remarkable and influential poems. And it's a poem I learned as a small boy and I think was published first in 1952 in his book called Erebel Spadoige. And um, it's an exhortation, this poem. And in it he says, Ter fuer na falashir tron on a grain a karkogaina. Is kier here, eg bunna spere, eg rahir down, or liver ye is son mofohitokus and tishil gardamok or veil of greene. Shine the goddess, dun queen, fe hollis and thronona, bull is us glofer, dint in fame is the clo cart. And you know, we're sitting in a place here that is a gueltuk, that is a little hare's corner, if you like, um, a, a wondrous place with a powerful language with a wonderful, living, vibrant culture that is full of music and song and a community that sustains that culture. And in his words, he says, Ter fuer na falashir tron o na greine. Go down the sunlit edge of the cliff of an evening. Agus kihir hir a rachiach thig bonus beirand and there you will see glistening at the edge of the world um, this beautiful language on the tongues of people. And it says, knock and it will be opened unto you. And I couldn't think really of anything more appropriate to preface um, my remarks at the opening of this second iteration of Ireland's Edge, because we're here to wonder about culture, we wonder about its value, to wonder about its place, and to wonder about how we can best work with that culture and this magnificent resource that we have for, I suppose, for, for the, the beginnings of a journey into a new and creative Ireland. So I'm going to thank you for accepting the invitation to come to Ireland's Edge at Ayers Other Voices Music Festival. This is our 15th year. We began 15 years ago in an age that was pre-Twitter, pre-Facebook, pre-Instagram, and pre the rest of it, and we communicated in a slightly more simple way. And I'd like, before introducing the program, to share our motivations and why Nulo O'Connor, Murin Kelleher, and myself are motivated in this forum to put a sharper focus on ideas and conversations that have been shared informally and continuously here for many years in this place. Ireland's Edge as we will have it today and tomorrow morning, is about shifting Irish thinking towards a more integrated view of the arts and culture and their place and contribution in our society, our economy, and our place in the world. We come to this informed by 15 years of experience with other voices, the music and the musicians who have gathered here each December, and there are 73 bands going to play around the town over the next three days in every box room, bedroom, front room, back room, bar room that you can find. And it's going to be some fun. Some of you were out last night experiencing um, a, little that, a little of that. And we've nurtured a lot of musicians here and we've helped their musical endeavors and much talent has been discovered here. Musical journeys started here. Some of them were accelerated here. And there was lots of collaborations between young musicians learning their craft and more experienced ones sharing their knowledge with those who are beginning their careers. 
careers that have taken them from this place, like walking on cars, out into the world, and to a great career in music. But as I said, much is changing. It's production in terms of music, in terms of its production, and consumption um, has changed and has moved right into the heart of the digital age, an age in which the ongoing struggle for musicians to pursue their craft is mirrored in the challenge that we have in sustaining a festival like this. Um, we've been going for 15 years and we've taken this festival out of here. We've taken it to London and we've taken it to New York and we've taken it to Derry and Wesley is here, um, helped that journey. And just some weeks ago, we were in Austin, Texas, and I'd like if you give a very warm welcome to our partners from Austin, Texas, who are seated down here, um, Freddie and Graham and Molly and Lisa. Thank you very much for the invitation. It was a delight to accept it. We had a ball, and we found ourselves in the city of Austin, which is a city that you can see where the twin pillars of the economy are music and tech and the place that they intersect and intersect so wonderfully was in Austin. We got to sit down and play music and film music with Willie Nelson. So thank you very much and they've made the journey here. <clears throat> and I think that in Texas, it, it, it became very clear to me that um, the people there, the people who run the city and the people who are the policy makers and the strategists are persuaded, really, of the public good attendant to an endeavor like this. And our experience was further developed within the crucible of the creative minds endeavor of the US ambassador, Mr. Kevin O'Malley, and the interactions that this brought with the wider creative community, not least of them being our partnership here today with Intel Ireland. We see in the specifics of that experience a broader story at play, a story about arts and culture more broadly, stories about a creative process and experience that is dynamic, is messy, is filled with much success, but also not unrelated to failure, an experience about how that process is regarded in Ireland, a story about how a perspective or orientation of instrumentality and inappropriate approaches to evaluating investment in arts and culture can undermine much of what is valuable, unique, otherwise inaccessible. A propensity for the receiver to overlook the giver and how siloed thinking and, and the confusion it causes undermines and discourages the best of intentions across different silos. Three weeks before he died, <clears throat> John F. Kennedy delivered the eulogy at the funeral of the poet Robert Frost. And he said, I see little of more importance to the future of our country and our citizens than the full recognition of the role of the artist. If art is to nourish the roots of our culture, society must set the artist free to follow his or her vision wherever it takes them. We must never forget that art is not a form of propaganda. It is a form of truth. The highest duty of the writer, the composer, the artist, is to remain true to himself or to herself and let the chips fall where they may. In serving a vision of the truth, the artist best serves the nation. And the nation which disdains the mission of the artist invites the fate of Robert Frost's hired man, that of having nothing to look backward on with pride and nothing to look forward to with hope. Informed by that, we come to explore the notion of Ireland's edge or Ireland's edges and the contribution of arts and culture to that. We start, and I think like many in this room, believing that Ireland's arts and culture matter. And that in their most vibrant and creative being, they endow Ireland with an edge. Primarily, they matter in and for themselves, 
Secondarily, however, in their byproducts, they do in fact endow Ireland with an edge, an edge that is gifted to us by artist, artists, an edge that is imparted and not in a transactional mode, an edge that is both critical and distinctive in arenas outside the realm of arts and culture, an edge that is assuming greater import in our increasingly platformed world, forged by networks in which we communicate, trade, and compete, networks that are physical and virtual, on land and in the cloud, human and artificial, personal and corporate, political and sovereign, networks of capital and talent, networks which have been shown prone to fragility and capture, networks which are creating disintegration and polarity, as well as integration and plurality. Networks which increasingly differentiate between value and price, between production and redistribution, networks of shifting personal and cultural identities of shifting value, physical and tangible assets. Sonny Bates, the founder of Kickstarter said, the economic driver of the future isn't a factory or a piece of technology or software, it's actually networks. It's networks that produce art and culture and are critical drivers in a 21st century economy. So the cities and regions that are attracting and retaining the producers of art and culture and support their networks will be the economic winners this century. Some of you will have heard me say before that where culture goes, commerce follows. Sonny Bates says, networks begets culture begets networks. She has said, the global lingua franca right now is the language of business, but the language of culture is a much richer, more nuanced, more interesting language. A language that is expressed by and becomes an economic driver through networks. She talks about networks as loose, shifting connections of ideas, of people, of capital and support. Writing in The Economist recently, Ryan Avent said, 80% of the value of the firms which comprise the Standards and Poor's 500 is dark matter. The intangible secret sauce of companies, of, sorry, the, the intangible secret sauce, sorry, the intangible secret sauce of success, while the physical stuff that companies own account for less than 20% of corporate value. A total reversal of earlier decades. Successful companies, he says, evolve a way of gathering, processing, and acting on information that is critical to their success and which cannot be easily replicated. The value is social rather than individual. The same is increasingly true of countries, regions, cities, and towns. Our own cultural inheritance and creative community is a remarkable resource and a source of wisdom in a world experiencing this digital revolution. One which is beginning to teach us what a tectonic economic transformation looks like. As Frank Cottrell Boyce termed it, a gift in which innovation doesn't come from the profit motive and where the engine of that innovation is a reckless generosity between artists and the full-time, the part-time, the professional and the volunteer. In such a world, we believe there is much opportunity and benefit now for Ireland to think and act more strategically, to integrate thinking and policy in arts and culture with science and technology, education and learning, investment and trade, economic and social development, and most importantly, Ireland's relationship with the millions of people around the world who have an affinity with this place and with this culture. As John Tusser said, the arts link society to its past, a people to its inherited store of ideas, image and world. Yet the arts challenge those links in order to find ways of exploring new paths and ventures. The characteristics then of a creative thinking and artistic talent and the benefits and advantages 
the edge, and we are at the edge, right at the edge of Europe in Davos, is the broader theme of these two days. We're delighted to be here. We're delighted to welcome everybody here. And Dr. Genevieve Bell from Intel is going to come and speak to us um, in a moment, and she'll explore innovation and the dynamic ecosystem of functions and disciplines, including but not limited to science, technology, engineering, and maths. And there are some thank yous that are going to be um, important just now. Um, so many people have made this day possible. We welcome Nokia Bell Labs to Dingle, who have a long and distinguished history in the creation of new digital arts, and we're excited to hear more about their innovative experiments in arts and technology in the program later today. We also welcome Microsoft, whose mission to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more is underpinned by a core value of diversity and inclusion. They come to Ireland's edge to explore how the interconnection of STEM and STEAM can be key learning and development opportunities around this critical value. PwC are here as well, and they're very welcome, and they consistently challenge their people to think creatively, differently, and innovatively about their clients' problems, combining the professional with the creative and building a diverse organization and applauding effort helps them build talent. They see that collaboration with Ireland's Edge is a natural extension of that approach. Paul Carroll is here from CPL, who were recognized as one of Ireland's best places to work in 2015, and we acknowledge their leadership in Ireland in developing our talent and promoting diversity in the workplace. In regards to the American Chamber, I would like to welcome the American Chamber here. Mark, you're very, very welcome, and your team, and Katie, it's great to see you all here. I pay a special very, very welcome um, to you all. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity, Mark, to recognize the work that you do and the strong support that you have given us over the last number of months. So, here we are. Um, some opening remarks um, to set us going. Um, any other here as well? I see John Concannon. John, thank you very much for uh, your support and many congratulations on all the work you've done. 1916, 2016, you'll be with us here tomorrow um, to talk to these things and to talk perhaps and maybe give us a hint as to what might be coming down the track with the notion of a creative Ireland. Now, um, I'm going to introduce to you um, somebody who has been uh, hugely supportive um, of what it is we're about here today and supportive of the Other Voices project this year. Um, a fiber optic cable has been driven um, to Dingle, is now in place, and is going to enable us to be able to speak to the world in a way that we've not been able to do um, up until now. Um, it shows and is indicative of how important broadband rollout is going to be for every citizen in this state. And to introduce our keynote speaker, would you welcome please the Managing Director of Open Air, Ms. Caroline Lennon. Thank you. 